Now, we are no strangers to tackling taboos, and today we're talking chronic period pain. Now, whilst 91% of women report monthly period pain, only a small number will admit to taking time off work for it, and even feel more comfortable discussing the menopause than they do about their periods. Um, Judy, do we need to be more open about this? Do we need to talk more about it? Do we need to realise? And we all suffer in different levels. It yeah. depends. It, you know, we're all so different. And I think Definitely. maybe that's what makes it difficult yeah. to try and explain to other people what you're going Definitely. through. Definitely. And I think we should, because I, you know, I remember you, know, you get teenage years and you get taught about periods, you start your periods and so on, and you know what's there, why it's there and why you have to have it. But there's no real discussion about if you're having pain and what this might be and what an issue might be. And I got to about 20, 19, 20, and I, I had severe chronic period pains. You know, most months I'd be, you know, just bound to my bed, mm -hmm. um, crying, vomiting. Um, I mean, pain where I, I just didn't know what was going on or how to function. And I felt kind of a way to say to any workplace that I had bad period pains. I think I'd done it a few times. And then it was that kind of feeling of, like, just get on with it. Mm. Um, and then, you know, I went to a gynaecologist and after a while I found out that I had endometriosis. I hope I said it right. Mm -hmm. um, which is about the lining of your womb. But I, the pain, honestly, the pain was horrific um, and, you know, heavy flow, which made me anemic. And it was just that back and forth of questioning what is going on with my body or what can be done to help. And, and it was things like being on painkillers but not feeling any different and then just not feeling that it was accepted as something um, for you to take a day off. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I struggled with, with going to work. You're conscious already about the pain, about the vomiting, about, you know, having accidents um, and having all of that in a workplace and trying to concentrate. It, it is something that we need to be able to have an honest conversation about. Um, and obviously to your, how you like to talk about it, but definitely at that time, I wish um, I was more confident in myself uh, to have that time off and actually to research a little bit more, or there was that kind of support around it, especially when I was diagnosed with endometriosis. Yeah, of course. But I think as well, I'm just I'm reading here that 40 percent of women have never taken time off work because of period pains, and it does make you think that we, we always, we, the vast majority of us, we're not moaners. We don't want to sound like we have we're, we're complaining yeah. about anything. We want to do our jobs and mm. go home, do the children thing or whatever it is your life entails, but. You know, you've got a period every month. Mm. You might then have a child. You might have to be off work for whatever length of time, maternity leave. Then suddenly you're talking about menopause. It seems to me like there's always something that we have to try and deal with yeah. that you don't want to cause any fuss about, but you can't help it. Mm. And equally so, you're, you could be in agony and you don't want to say it because you think, I'll be in agony again in four weeks' time mm, yeah. and I don't want to have to call in again. It's You're in an impossible position sometimes. Yeah, I think it's a hard one. I think, like you said, because everyone has different versions of it. Like, I know when I was young, me and my sister were very similar to you, Judy. Right. Like, we'd pass out if we were out and about and we had our period or we'd throw up because the pain was so mm. bad. And, like, I remember having a sleepover with my mates and going up to my mum in the middle of the night and, like, having to have a bath just to try and ease the pain and that didn't help or whatever. And then I tried to go on the pill, but I couldn't take the pill because it didn't agree with me. So I got given, like, really strong painkillers. And I was in S-Cup Juniors at this point, so I was performing and things like that. And, you know, surrounded by adults and when you're young, you don't want to say, oh, I've got my period. Yeah, I've got really bad definitely. period pain. Um, and it, it almost feels like it's not accepted as an excuse to not work or not to do something because it is something we have every month and mm -hmm. you've just got to get on with it. But for some people, like we were when we were younger, it's not, it's not possible. No. Um, and I think having to say, oh, I've got endometriosis as an excuse to do it for people to take it seriously isn't good enough. But then I know even with that, I've got six really close mates and I think four out of us has endometriosis. Wow. So they're dealing with pain every month. I've had a friend that's just had a hysterectomy because of it. Mm. So I think there's so many things like that that you go through, like you say, on a monthly basis that it is, it's not just the fact that you don't want to talk about periods, but it's also the fact that you don't want to say, oh, this is something I'm going to have monthly and someone at work might not take you on because of you might course. have to do take time off. But very difficult actually just for, for the three of you from a performance perspective. You're up on stage or you're up on stage and you're dancing mm -hmm. and likewise as well you're in a long day filming something. That's it's actually really difficult. You're conscious of it. You're conscious of it and you're just nervous. That that panic, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's just that panic moment of like, oh God, you know, because it 
other people feel uncomfortable. You've got to think that's how society has really made it in how um, period products are advertised. And back in the days, it wasn't yeah. really shown that much. We've been brought up like that to not really, you know, show that, you know, you've mm. got your bag, you've got a little bag with all your bits in it. Um, and some of us do generally feel embarrassed by Even it. Even that, there's that big red bear. Have you seen it, the new Disney film? I don't oh, know yeah, if your grandkids yeah. have watched it. I can't remember what it's called. And she's like, when she gets her period for the first time, she turns into this big bear. And I think it's great that they're acknowledging it, but also it's like, again, demonising it a little bit, like, you're going to turn into a bear yeah. when you get your period. <laughs> but it wasn't even talked about, was it, really, in those days? It used to be called mm. your monthlies. You've got your monthlies yes, now, oh whatever. My God. And you'd never see, like, tampax or sanitary towels or anything. They were always locked away in a bathroom cupboard. You'd never ask your dad or anyone to go and get you anything. But I know my youngest one was really embarrassed by it and she wouldn't talk to me about it, but I knew that she'd started her periods. And I kept saying to her, why don't you talk to Lauren? Talk to your sister, she'll talk to you about it. But she, in the end, I just used to get get the pads and put them in a drawer and then, like, make sure that they, they were there all the time. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I was lucky. I didn't really have a lot. I used to get a bit uncomfortable a couple of days before. But then when the period stopped, you get the ump then, cos you think, I'm not really going to have a period again now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have any more babies now, can I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I like, also did the first Lilla advert, radio advert, and that on the oh, telly, when yeah. that was the first time it was spoken about, like, on social media or whatever oh, wow. in those days. And but, how many uh, years ago was that, roughly, do you think, Oh, Linda? God, I was probably about... 18, 19, okay, then. Right, 65 yeah. now, so a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, but it was a thing, wasn't it? It was, yeah. It was actually the first time it was actually speak. spoken about. Because I, I think it's great, all these adverts, what they have on there now as well. Absolutely, and they're very, very specific now. We all know what it is. They're slightly doing away with the blue water. I know Nadia always has a moan about that. She says, why did they have to put blue water on the pads and the advertisements? It's not what it is. And we are, we sort of have to try and... I paint around what the, the truth is. Yeah. But I also equally understand, I, I wouldn't be someone that kind of openly comes in and talks about it. I just mm -hmm. sort of, you just get on with it. I'll just quietly get on with it. Yeah. And sometimes it's worse than others. So I, I understand whatever view you have on it yourself and how comfortable you feel. Yeah. You don't maybe feel comfortable coming into work and explaining to your boss, Oh, I don't feel great it's this got me month. monthly. Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's a, it's a personal thing for a lot of people. Yeah, it is. Um, but yes, everyone can suffer at some level, isn't that, no matter how old, like you say, from yeah. teenage, oh, right the way through, Julie, yeah. it's there. But we, we're feeling your pain if you're going through anything today. We've all been there in some shape or form.